a girl from the Himalayas and a girl from London. And what's the link? How can it be that a primitive wanderer like this and a sophisticated miss like that can be dependent on each other? Here's a child of the hills who's never seen a motor car or a skyscraper capital. Yet there's a surprising connection between the wool-gathering girls of Kashmir and the sort of girl you'll see in this London scene, where a Kashmir sweater is a cachet of all that's chic and sleek and a la mode. Come to Srinagar to see the primitive origins of the softest material that Western women regard as the last word in luxury. Srinagar, capital of Kashmir, and the last place you'd expect to find on a fashion map, consider the improbability of this shantytown start of gossamer loveliness. Just try and equate this market with the Mayfair boutiques, where the richest and ritziest of women will buy the softest and most elegant knitwear that the world has found. Pathé Pictorial's magic carpet has never gone so far from the beaten track to follow a civilized refinement back to its natural habitat, here in the forgotten valley of the Mughal kings. For the Kashmir story starts in the snowy mountains of the east, in a world that the civilized west would never expect to meet or need The Kashmir story gets even more surprising as you approach its remote source. Who would associate those mountain goats with drawing room finery? Yet that's the only animal in the world with an underfleece so soft that women think of it and mink and champagne and caviar in the same extravagant breath. What a weird, unpredictable link it is, which has set Himalayan goat herds making the name of their lost mountain state a household word in the salons of the world's top capitals. And music in any woman's ears. Notice you comb out this soft underdown, you don't shear it. You tease it out before you send it on a journey to London, Paris, New York. A journey which in itself will take about a year. And the music you associate with this caressing wool, when it's been given its fine, final trimmings, bears no resemblance to this chant of the hills. This is Punjab country, where the air is rare and bracing. Hill station country, sheltered from the monsoon by the great granite mountains that have pushed their way up through the Paleozoic rock. This is the land of deodars with occasional foothill fir trees, the home of the ibex, the brown bear and the Kashmir stag. This is the valley where, surprisingly, you find wild fruit trees where the unpromising looking ground is so fertile you can grow bumper crops of Indian corn, rice enough to feed half a continent, asparagus, and any vegetable delicacy you can name. Trouble is, it's so far from anywhere else. Sheer loneliness would empty this valley altogether were it not for that western craving for Kashmir wool. There's loneliness in the music of the place. It's hard to equate this pastoral life with the harsh battles there have been at India's northwest frontier, with the wrangling that even now keeps bursting across this deceptively peaceful-seeming valley. Kashmir is a buffer state that nobody wants to live in, but that everybody tries to occupy. It's a place that bristles with ironies and surprises. Nobody you meet has ever been here, said our cameraman, Stan Guzzi, but by some quirk of fate, I've been here twice. And he had to wait for a war to simmer down before he could take these tranquil pictures, before he was allowed to enter this veil of emptiness, where the Jhelum River is the one and only winding highway. What would life be without this waterway? 
Who could conceive of life on the roof of the world without this outlet? Lake Wula and 80 miles of this mountain river are busy with little boats. They carry the cashmere wool and the copperware, the silver and the silks, the carved wood that the place is famed for. No two boats are ever quite alike. And it's the same with the huddle of wooden houses in Srinaga, with their balconies and carvings. That precious wool has traveled by mule pack before this Jhelum River stage of its long journey to that strange, unbelievable place, Europe. It'll be long, long months before it reaches you. They're as vague here as to where it's going as we are as to where it's come from. Nominally, they're Mohammedans, these river gypsies in their strange valley, 5,000 feet above the sea. But the prophet would scarcely recognize these faithful followers. Strange superstitions fill their lives. The abominable snowman lurks in the nearby mountains. Ghostly echoes from the Himalayas answer their shouts. Demons come dancing down the river with the floods. Fires break out in the foothills. Allah is easily displeased. And the old men can always summon up some bygone bogeyman to account for each new workaday accident or to while away time when the sun sets. Mm -hmm. 